Well everyone, the very first review of the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor has been published by none other than El Chapuzas Informatico, which these guys kind of have a tendency to do this. I mean, they've done it for pretty much every Ryzen CPU, so it makes you wonder how they keep getting them. The review takes a look at various performance aspects of AMD's 7 nanometer based Ryzen 5 3600, which is the entry level chip that will be hitting the retail market for $199 US, making it one of the best options for mainstream gaming PCs, at least in that price range. While the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't go on sale until the 7th of July, just a couple weeks away, the Spanish media outlet has let out the performance figures in both general CPU test and gaming titles. The AMD Ryzen 5 3600 is the most affordable option in the entire third generation Ryzen lineup that features some nice specifications. Now, one real quick note is they will be releasing the Ryzen 5 and 3400G and the Ryzen 3 3200G. Those are second generation of those parts. So there is a distinction between third generation and those, even though they're the same number. Aside from being based on the 7 nanometer Zen 2 core architecture, the Ryzen 5 3600 offers 6 cores, 12 threads, and has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz, which is pretty standard for the 6 core parts. There's also 35 megabytes of total cache and a TDP of only 65 watts. The processor will be shipping with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which I would say is pretty decent as far as reference coolers go, and it will definitely get the job done. And the processor was tested on an X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard with G-Skill Flare X DDR4 memory, 16 gigabytes of 3200 MHz. It's the same kit that we use here. It's a B Samsung B-Die kit, so CL14, pretty good kit of memory. And an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition graphics card. It's also featured the reference heatsink for cooling, which delivered temperatures of around 40 degrees Celsius at idle and 75C under full load. The power consumption is stated to settle in around 125 watts in idle and 360 watts at load for the entire PC. The difference between the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Ryzen 5 3600 was around 55 watts at the same time. The difference between the Ryzen 7 2700X and the Ryzen 5 3600 is around 65 watts. Now coming to the main performance test. First of all, the chip was tested in several CPU benchmarks such as Cinebench R15, Cinebench R20, W-Prime X264 encoding. In all of the multi-core tests, the chip outperformed the Core i7-9700K, which is an incredible feat considering the fact that the Core i7-9700K is a 95 watt processor, while this Ryzen 5 3600 is a 65 watt processor. Not to mention, it's roughly half the price. In single core tests, the chip did manage to feature performance on par with the Core i9-9900K, which is Intel's top mainstream chip, while the Ryzen 5 3600 is AMD's most entry level chip. This alone goes off to show massive IPC improvements that AMD has achieved with their 7 nanometer Zen 2 core architecture. Intel is on top for sure, but we have to consider that those chips cost north of $400 US and will soon be including the higher clocked and higher core count Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 variants featuring 8 and 12 cores. Now other tests include latency and gaming figures, and the gaming figures are definitely a boost from the Ryzen 7 2700X, but the Intel 8th and 9th generation processors still lead in these tests. The main reason could be the latency, which seems to be lacking a lot in this specific review. The source mentions that they are using a very early BIOS, and from what I've personally heard, board makers are still sorting out their final BIOSes for their X570 boards, let alone the X470. We've already seen that AMD Ryzen 3000 series processors are tuned for higher clock DDR4 DIMMs, so expect improved latency when the processor is equipped with 3600 to 4200 MHz DDR4 DIMMs, which are said to be the sweet spot for the X570 platform. So unless the X470 platform uses a more mature BIOS, similar to the ones that X570 would have on launch, the test should not be taken as final verdict of third generation Ryzen performance. Even with the botched out BIOS, the Ryzen 5 3600 shows very strong performance demonstrations and we expect it to be one of the more popular options in the $200 US market. 
So there are some things to take into consideration here. The chip that they had would not overclock, so they had to run it at stock, so they couldn't see just how far it would go. And that doesn't indicate that a final BIOS for X470 or X370 that get those beta BIOSes would not be able to overclock their chips. So this is an early review that somebody put out without having all of the well, specifications lined out. We don't know how it's going to perform on XSET 570 yet. We don't know how PCIe Gen 4 is going to affect things. And looking at their bandwidth test on the memory, I would argue to say that IDA64 is not quite ready for these, this chip to be tested because I really don't imagine that those numbers are quite accurate. But it is good to see that the performance is fairly good. Actually, it's really good for a $200 chip with flaky BIOS at best. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this chip down below. We'll have more information coming soon, especially at launch day, so definitely keep it locked here and over at the site. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.